House members today returning from their traditional summer recess only to mark a solemn occasion. The death of iconic figure Queen Elizabeth II. Leading off today's tributes, the Prime Minister spoke to the global impact of her passing and the indelible mark the late monarch has left in the hearts and minds of the nation. Fern Carey starts us off tonight. In expressing condolences to King Charles III and all members of the royal family following the death of Queen Elizabeth II, Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis Casey indicated that the death of the late monarch has impacted the entire global community. As Her Majesty was an international icon of steady leadership and dedicated service over these past 70 years. Her Majesty's dedicated commitment to fulfilling her duty and the warmth wit and wisdom with which he did so are legendary. How many 25-year-olds can you think of who would not only take on such weighty responsibilities, but would then discharge them in such a sustained and dignified way for 70 years? From every perspective, Queen Elizabeth II was a remarkable woman. The late Majesty's commitment to the Commonwealth is well known. Highlighting the deep ties between the United Kingdom and the Bahamas, the Prime Minister expressed the hope that the bilateral relationship between our two countries will continue to grow in the years ahead. When I met King Charles III last year at COP26 in Glasgow and earlier this year at Shogum in Gigali, Rwanda, I was also pleased to host Prince William and his wife Catherine on their royal visit back in May. King Charles was an early and vigorous proponent of the need to do something more and better to protect our environment. Prince William has followed his footsteps. Acknowledging that the monarch's death has reopened the debate on whether or not the Bahamas should become a republic, the Prime Minister said it is an issue that can be addressed after the official period of mourning for the Queen has passed. Our High Commissioner in London, Mr. Ellison Greenslade, was hosted by King Charles at a private reception about two days ago. He also represented us earlier today by being a member of the small official delegation receiving the Queen's body at West Westminster. And after the state funeral in London on Monday, I was invited to attend the final committal of Her Majesty's body at Windsor. These privileges attest to the fact that the British monarch remains head of state in the Bahamas, represented by our Governor General and attest to the fact that the Bahamas is back on the national scene. Parliamentarians also observed a moment of silence in memory of the late Queen before the House of Assembly adjourned. For the Bahamas tonight, I'm Fern Carey. Well, opposition leader Michael Pintard also expressing condolences to the royal family. In doing so, he lauded the Queen for serving the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth of Nations with distinction. Her Majesty the Queen was by many estimates, a consummate leader who served humanity with dignity, decency, and unchanging loyalty during 70-year reign of the Commonwealth of Nations. Her Majesty the Queen was committed to empowering young people. This, I remember the contributions of the royal family as I served as the youth spokesperson for then 52 Commonwealth countries for a three-year period. She was diligent in terms of the work done in protecting the environment. Pintard adding that the late sovereign had a special place in her heart for the Bahamas. We recall that Her Majesty was fond of the Bahamas having visited these shores on five occasions during her reign in 1966, 1975, and of course during her Silver Jubilee in 1977 and during Shogun 1985 and in 1994. 